Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of the concert version of Vincenzo Bellini's Norma, which had its premiere at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Peta Valentovich, and the chorus master was William Spaulding. Now, Norma is Vincenzo Bellini's most famous opera of all time, totally up there with the likes of La Sonambula and Ipuritani. And it's also his most performed, with the title role garnering a lot of history's greatest sopranos, the likes of Claudia Muzio, Rosa Raisa, Rosa Poncelle, Maria Callas, Gina Cigna, Joan Sutherland, Beverly Sills, Leila Gencher, Cristina Durtecom, Montserrat Caballe, Angeles Gulen, Katia Ricciarelli, Edita Gruberova, Mariella Devia, Elena Moschuk, Maria Gresta, and many, 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 many other sopranos, whether they be coloraturas, full lyrics, spintos, or full dramatics, who just really sang this role all throughout their careers. And this is also very well known for being quite challenging, as I'll also discuss when I get to the singing much later. In fact, I also have two CDs of this particular opera, one starring Maria Callas, Krista Ludwig, Franco Corelli, and Nicola Zaccaria, and the other starring Joan Sutherland, Montserrat Caballe, Luciano Pavarotti, and Samuel Ramey in the roles, respectively, of Norma, Adalgisa, Pollone, and Oroveso. In fact, whenever you think Norma, a lot of people would think Maria Callas because she was basically the one who basically resurrected the bel canto style of singing, not just with Norma, but also with the likes of Ipuritani after she had a gig as Brunhilde from Die Valkyrie, Lucia di Lammermoor, Sonambula, and many, many other bel canto operas. Ever since then, after Callas dominated this role, other singers followed suit, the likes of Joan Sutherland, Leila Gencher, Beverly Sills, Christina Dortecom, and many, many other sopranos who have also tried to live up to Callas' legacy of really resurrecting the role of Norma, even though there were other singers who sang the role before her, including the likes of Claudio Muzio, Rosa Raisa, Rosa Poncelle, and Gina Cigna, just to name a few. And this is also one of my most favorite bel canto operas of all time, totally up there with the likes of Lucia de la Marmur, Anna Bolena, Maria Stuarda, Roberto de Verre, Semiramide, Guillaume Tell, Le Comtori, Il Barbiere di Siviglia, and many, many other bel canto operas that I absolutely adore. So Norma really does have a very special place in my heart because I also love the music. I really love Casta Diva. What I seem to notice about this particular aria is that the original soprano, Giudita Pasta, who also created the role in 1831, sort of complained about the high tessitura of that aria because originally, Casta Diva was written in the key of G. So, Giudita Pasta ended up singing the aria in the key of F, which turned out to be the staple key of a lot of sopranos using it as either their concert piece or basically when they sing the role of Norma in its entirety. The only few singers who have ever sung Casta Diva in the key of G were mainly the likes of Joan Sutherland, Edita Gruberova, Beverly Sills, and Barbara Quintiliani. So I always love it when I hear the Casta Diva in its original key. While I have no problem with the Casta Diva in F, which basically sounds like a prayer and sounds like it's very useful for meditation, I also have to say that the Casta Diva in its original key sounds a little bit more exciting while still maintaining that meditation and that feeling of prayer throughout this aria, which I definitely love. I also love the duet between Norma and Adalgisa, the one that begins with Mira o Norma a tuoi ginocchi and ends with Si fina l'ora l'ora estreme. You really need two great sopranos to really 
sing this duet. And at times, if they're lucky enough, you also need to have them sing the high C of both Norma and Alagiza, which really does make it very exciting. With that said, let's get on to what I thought about the singing and the conducting. Starting off with Edita Grubarova singing the title role of Norma. With Norma, you really need a true dramatic coloratura soprano to be able to pull off this role very well. This role calls for no Tweety Bird sopranos, no light sopranos whatsoever. This role, according to a lot of people, is a tour de force role. This needs a lot of heft, yet a lot of agility, lyricism, and loads and loads of dimension. Any singer who dares sing this much coveted role doesn't only need to sing this, but also needs to prove herself as a capable actress, someone who can be able to bring out a lot of dimension and someone who can be able to bring out a lot of excitement with this role while still keeping it natural. There have been like a lot of sopranos who have found success in this much coveted role. The ones that really come to my mind that I really love so much are not just Maria Callas, who is a very famous interpreter of the role, but also the likes of Joan Sutherland, Leila Gencher, Beverly Sills, Christina Dortecom, Françoise Garnet, and many other grand dramatic coloratura sopranos who sang this role and kept it in their repertoire for many years. With Edita Gruberova, she has sung this role for a good 10 or 11 years, starting off with a recording with Achilles Machado's Pallone, Elina Garancha as Adalgisa, and Alistair Miles, who sang Oroeso. And until then, she has kept that role in her repertoire. Yes, there were critics who said that she doesn't have the right voice for Norma, they felt like her voice was almost not too supported. But as I heard her in this role, I could tell that she has sung this role for many years. The beauty of her voice is still there, even as she pushes 70. Now that is quite a feat to be able to still sing this role and still give it a lot of emotion and a lot of dimension. On one side, a part of me thinks that Madame Gruberova kind of needs to retire and pretty much resort to giving master classes to a lot of young singers. On the other hand, I am very much astounded by the longevity that she still has and that charisma that she continues to have and her total dedication to her art. Now, that is definitely true dedication right there as evidenced by Madame Grubarova. Even though I don't really care for her chest notes, which I'll say this once and I'll say this again, I find them to be very hollow and quite unsupported. And those are basically her Achilles heels, so to say. I find her top notes and her pianissimo singing to be very exciting and very much worth writing home about. So with that said, I really have to give credit where credit is due to the hard work, the diligence, the dedication, the determination that Madame Grubarova really gives into this very coveted role of Norma. Brava to you, Madame Grubarova. I hope you continue to sing for many years, and I hope that you'll still be able to be a huge inspiration for a lot of young singers. Singing her foil, Adalgisa, is the wonderful Italian mezzo, Sonia Ganassi. Now, Adalgisa, the interesting thing about this role is that she used to be sung by a lyric soprano. This role was actually created by the coloratura soprano Giulia Grisi, who was also very well known for her interpretations of Norina from Don Pasquale, Amina from La Sonambula, and even created the role of Elvira from Ipuritani. 
Throughout history, there have been a lot of high dramatic mezzo-sopranos who have sung the role of the younger priestess Adagiza, and those include Ebe Stignani, Giulietta Simeonato, Fiorenza Casotto, Krista Ludwig, Jane Henschel, Sonia Ganassi, of course, Roxandra Donosse, Stefania Toshiska, Elena Obrasova, Shirley Verrett, and Grace Bumbry, the latter of the two, have also sung the title role. And there were also a lot of sopranos who even sang Adalgisa, the likes of Anna Caterina Antonacci, Lela Cuverli, Alexandrina Pendachanska, Carmela Remigio, Ruth Ann Swenson, Eva May, and even Sumi Jo on record, and even the likes of Rebecca Olvera, just to name a few. So what you really need in Adalgisa is that you either need a high dramatic mezzo, a dramatic soprano, or even that of a spinto soprano to be able to complement that of Norma's dramatic coloratura assoluta singing. And if you have a great adagiza to really match well with any great Norma, then your evening will be very much complete. And there has also been no shortage of Zwischenfach singers who also sang Adagiza, the likes of Violeta Urmana and Jean Pilon, just to name a few. And with Sonia Ganassi as Adalgisa, she really sang her heart out in this role. She was able to bring out a lot of sweetness and innocence to this role. She was able to really give it her all and just make this role her own, as she has also sung Adalgisa for quite some time as well. But I also seem to notice that there were moments in which her high notes tended to be screechy and thin, which is no surprise because Madame Ganassi has been singing a lot of the really challenging coloratura mezzo roles since the late 80s, early 90s, and has then sung a lot of the lyric mezzo and the dramatic mezzo parts, and even some of the Zwischenfach parts as well, which kind of took a toll on her voice. But regardless of that, she still manages to give such a very heartfelt portrayal. Over the years, Madame Ganassi has sung a lot of the coloratura mezzo roles of Rossini, the likes of Rosina, Isabella, and Angelina. And then later on, she sang a lot of the more lyrical mezzo roles, like Niklaus from Tales of Hoffman, and even the French repertoire of the title role of Carmen and Charlotte from Werther. And nowadays, she's singing the more dramatic repertoire and even the more Zwischenfach repertoire the likes of Eboli from Don Carlo, Amneris from Aida, and Santuzza from Cavalleria Rusticana. So the fact that you really have this singer who has been singing for a great number of years and then again sang Adalgisa tonight has really shown that yes, despite the wear and tear that her voice tended to have in some occasions, she still managed to pull everything together and really call it a great evening, especially with her duet with Gruberova as Norma. I felt like their voices blended very well, and she was totally fine in this role. She managed to really give such a heartfelt portrayal as Adalgisa, and she really owned it. Singing the role of the chief high priest, Oroveso, was the wonderful bass baritone Marco Mimitsa. Oroveso is quite coveted compared to the likes of Boris Godunov, Don Giovanni, Philip II, Spada Fucile, Ramphis, the King from Aida, Banco from Macbeth, and many, many other basso roles, which a lot of bassos would really come to just flock to sing this character. It's a thankless sing for any basso cantante, but it's garnered a lot of great bassos who managed to lend their voices to this father figure, including the likes of Giacomo Vaghi, Giulio Neri, Boris Christoph, Cesare Sieppi, Giorgio Tozzi, Jerome Hines, 
Roberto Scanduzzi, Samuel Ramey, Nicola Zaccaria, and many, many other bassos who have not only made the roles of Boris Godunov, Don Giovanni, Philip II, Jacopo Fiesco, and many of the basso cantante roles their own, but also this role as their own and have kept it in the repertoire for many, many years. And with Marco Mimitsa, he did kind of miss that plushness and that cavernous sound that I would have really, really loved to hear in any great Oroveso like the likes of Giulio Neri or Boris Kristof or Nikolai Gyaurov or Cesare Sieppi, Ezio Pinza, Tancredi Passero, and many, many other great bosses of the past. But Marco Mimitsa is his own creature. He was able to give such a dignified aura to this high priest. And I love the way he forms his mouth. I love the way he forms his vowels. Every time I see him sing, I just love to see his mouth move and see him, like, formulate a lot of the vowels, especially when it comes to the O's, the A's, especially when he has to, like, really put his lips forward all the time when he sings. It's it's just so... It's just something that I always love to see singers do. I love seeing singers do what they do best, especially when they have to formulate a lot of the vowels, a lot of the consonants, and he has a very fine technique. His voice is fine, and his voice is like granite, and his stage presence is strong, commanding, and it just practically left me on the edge of my seat every time he walked on stage. Granted, I would have loved to have a deeper voice, like the likes of Scandiuzzi, or Pinza, or Raimi, or many other great bassos of the past. But for what Marco Mimitsa brought to Oroveso, I could definitely say he did a very wonderful job in making the best out of this thankless, yet very wonderful basso part. Singing the role of Polione, the Roman soldier, was Fabio Sartori. Now, Polione really does need a great spinto tenor who can hit a lot of the high notes. He can also sing lyrically as well, yet at the same time have that sense of like drama to really add into the opera. There has been no shortage of tenors who have sung this wonderful yet thankless role, including the likes of Giacomo Lauri Valpi, Mario del Monaco, Franco Corelli, Gianni Raimondi, John Alexander, Luciano Pavarotti, Placido Domingo, Gregory Kunde, Chris Merritt, and many, many other tenors, whether they be full lyric, spinto, or full dramatic, who managed to really bring out the best out of Polione. In fact, the Helen Tenors who have sunk the likes of Polione not only include Mario del Monaco, but also include the likes of Charles Craig, John Vickers, Nicola Martinucci, and Giuseppe Giacomini. A lot of the tenors have basically found a lot of success singing this role, and you also do need a formidable Norma to be able to really really compliment any polione. And I thought that with Fabio Sartori, he did a very fine job singing this wonderful yet thankless tenor character. Granted, he's not so much of an actor on stage, but he has a very fine voice, which is quite typical for any Italian spinto tenor, which is no surprise because for many years, he has sung a lot of the lyrical tenor roles, starting off with Percy from Anna Bolena, Malcolmo from Macbeth, uh, Hillis from Le Troyant, and then starting to sing a lot of the more spinto roles like Hernani, Carlo from Imas Nadieri, Arrigo from Ivespri Siciliani, and many, many other tenor roles from not only Verdi, but also some from the bel canto repertoire, and even that of Verismo. There is no doubt that he has a very fine and very strong presence in terms of his vocal presence. He may not be that much of an actor, 
but he has a very fine instrument. He has the squillo, and his high notes were absolutely well executed. Granted, in his opening aria, Meco al altar de Venere, it was sort of a lukewarm start, as he didn't really sing the high C's as what I'd usually expect from this aria. In fact, my favorite singer of Meco al altar de Venere, or rather, my favorite singers of this particular aria, include the likes of Franco Corelli, Roberto Alagna, and Roberto Merola, just to name a few. With Fabio Sartori, he did a very fine job in this character. Wasn't that much of an actor, but his singing was fine all throughout, with a good stentorian sound and a fine vocal presence. He managed to really do his best in this wonderful tenor character. In the super small roles of Flavio, Florian's confidant, and Clotilde, Norma's handmaiden, we have Attilio Glazer and Rebecca Jo Loeb. Let's start off with Monsieur Glazer as Flavio. He has a very fine lyric tenor voice that basically complements with that of Fabio Sartori's more spinto tenor voice. With Rebecca Jo Loeb, she has a lovely stage presence helped with a gorgeous lyric mezzo timbre. So overall, I have to say that the singing was absolutely fine. I'd also like to make one more note about Gruberova's Norma. Granted, I would have loved to hear the high E flat in the In Mia Man Al Fin Tu Say duet after the part where Polona says, Ah, crudele. But I think she was also wise enough not to sing that as, well, given the current age of her voice pushing 70, I think it was also kind of evident that if she dared sing the high E flat, she would have risked losing her voice. So would have loved to hear the high E flat, but I think it was a wise move on Gruberova's part not to sing it yet, even though I probably love the high E flat to be sung in that second to the last duet of Norma and Polione. But still, overall, I have to say that the singing was absolutely well done. Kudos to all the singers for really putting it together and just making this wonderful premiere of the concert version of Norma very much worthwhile. And the conducting done by Maestro Peter Valentovich was quite well done. There were some moments in which it was quite sluggish, and there were some moments in which some of the sometimes the singers didn't really go in sync with the orchestra, but I thought he did a very solid job with handling the score and handling the music in general. And the chorus, what more can I expect from the chorus of the Deutsche Oper Berlin? William Spaulding manages to really, really, really give them their all, especially when they had to sing in one of my most favorite chorus is from Norma, the war chorus, which begins with Guerra, Guerra, which I found so exciting, and it's just something that I always love listening to every single time. So what more can I say about the concert version of Bellini's Norma? It was totally a great evening. Kudos to all the singers. Kudos to Maestro Petar Valentovich. Kudos to Maestro William Spaulding and Kudos to the orchestra and chorus of the Deutsche Oper Berlin for making this premiere really come alive. I hope that one day that this will also be a full-on stage production. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where I review Wagner's Lohengrin, which is also at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, and it's also my Mother's Day gift to all the lovely mothers out there. So until then, good night everybody.